Hello. This section is going to be a description of the Young equation. And the Young equation is another energy balance, like the Young Laplace equation, but it's an energy balance at fixed volume and it introduces a solid surface. So it begins to give some idea of why you have these curved interfaces and how they actually might be arranged within the pore space of a rock. So to do that, we're going to, again, show some slides. Okay, as shown here, and we're going to derive the Young equation, which can be done actually very straightforward. So as I said, it's an energy balance, but now we're gonna find the position of equilibrium of two phases on a solid surface. So we've introduced the solid, and this is gonna be at fixed volume rather than fixed uh, pressure. So here is a diagram of uh, two phases in uh, contact uh, with a solid. Um, we're going to get the Young equation in just, just a moment. So you view this energy balance more as a tension. You can, in fact, take a fixed volume of fluid on a surface and find its arrangement that will minimize the energy. It's just a bit more complex. It's much simpler. In fact, the key physical insight from Thomas Young to do this is to view it as a tension. And what do I mean by that? Well, if we have a diagram here, this is a blow up of how two fluids hit a solid surface. And they do so, so at a distinct angle theta, which is the contact angle. Now, there is an interfacial tension between the non-wetting phase, say it's air or oil, and the solid surface. There's an energy associated with that surface. So actually, because it's, there's an energy, you want to cover that surface and try and lower the energy. So you can imagine you're actually trying to pull the other phase, the wetting phase, over that surface. In fact, it's more energetically favorable, for the wetting phase, to be across that surface. You can imagine it's trying to drag it across. You can imagine there's a force. On the other hand, there is a, a, an energy associated with the interface between the wetting phase and the solid. So in fact, it's sort of pulling back. And there is an interface between the two fluids, between the wetting phases. So that's also, in fact, creating a force. Okay, so there's a force balance that we need to consider. So now we actually get to the derivation of the young Laplace equation, which is, which is here. It's quite actually quite simple. We just do a horizontal force balance. So if we just do a balance of forces, then the interfacial tension uh, between the non-wetting phase and the solid, M Laplace, is got to equal between the wetting phase and the solid on the, on the left-hand side, plus the component of the uh, force in the horizontal direction from the fluid fluid interface, so that's sigma cos theta. So in fact, that gives you, in fact, an equation for the contact angle. The contact angle um, is determined by the interfacial tensions or the interfacial energies, essentially, of the solid and of the fluid itself. Okay? So normally what we do is we measure the contact angle directly rather than predict it from these interfacial tensions, largely because interfacial tensions with a solid are rather difficult to measure, but there is a relationship between them. Now, the obvious comment that people make at this point is that that's fine, but what about uh, the vertical force balance? Uh, it doesn't just sort of lift off the surface because that seems to be unbalanced. It is true, there is a, there is a force vertically um, from the fluid fluid interface, but that is countered by um, basically intermolecular interaction of this three phase contact line where the three phases meet. There is some subatomic rearrangement of the fluids that basically pulled out, sorry, of the fluids and the solid that basically pulled out. So it's a relatively weak force. There is in fact a balance. And if we consider three fluid phases in three phase plane, in fact, um, there would be a, a definite vertical force balance. Okay. So now what this leads to is a definition of wettability. So we can have different interactions of one phase with solid surface. So typically, normally, um, we measure the contact angle through the denser phase, because the two liquid fluid phases, um, which one do you actually measure the angle through? Um, it's normally through the denser phase. So uh, normally that's water. So what we show here on the right are uh, oil water systems. So the first one is where the contact angle is essentially zero. So that's completely water wet. So if we have oil, it will form just a bead or a sphere on the surface with essentially virtually no contact with the surface. So an angle of zero. 
If we have a contact angle that's less than 90 degrees, it's called water wet because it means that the water has a preference for the surface. So what you tend to find is that the oil curves away from the surface, tries to contact the surface as little as possible. So immediately we're now beginning to see why we get these curvatures. These interfaces are inevitably curved because one phase prefers the surface, the other phase does not, so it sort of curves away from it. Okay? We have a contact angle of 90 degrees, it's neutrally wet, so in this case neither the oil nor the water can contact the surface. But we can have cases uh, which are more oil wet, largely they're surfaces um, that are coated with oil, take plastic surfaces, or laminated surfaces or highly polished surfaces. They're normally designed that way because they repel water. Okay, so they're not water wet, but they may be oil wet. And so you can have cases where the contact angle is greater than 90 degrees. And indeed, you could have a case where the oil is completely oil wet, and in fact, the oil just spreads over the surface. Okay. So you can have a, a wide range of contact because when we're looking in the subsurface, we're looking in soils, we have organic material, we have bacteria. Um, so we have a wide range of chemical compounds on the solid surface. So this leads to a wide range of surface attractions and contact angles. And deep underground, uh, if we're looking at oil reservoirs, we will have crude oil deep underground. There'll be surface active components of the crude oil that adhere to the solid surface. So whereas a clean surface, say pure um, silica or calcite, silica is SiO2, it's the same as glass. So a clean glass surface um, is naturally water wet. You can have any range of contact angles from things that are more oil wet to things that still remain relatively water wet. So I'm uh, now gonna have um, a few words actually about the people we've been talking about. So we've had the young Laplace equation, and we've had the Young equation. So who, who are these people? So um, here are some pictures, Thomas Young and the so-called Marquis de Laplace. Um, Thomas Young was an early 19th century English physicist. He worked on a number of things, not just uh, contact angle. Um, he tried to decipher holographics, he didn't quite get there. Uh, so some of French got there um, because they had the source material, the Ros Rosetta Stone to, to, to work on. Um, but he looked at the wave theory of light, um, Young's double slit experiment, for instance, uh, Young's modulus in elasticity recognized two of his contributions to science. Pierre Simon Laplace um, was a brilliant French physicist and mathematician in the same area. He made uh, major contributions to astronomy, statistics, and mathematics. He also was Napoleon's Minister of the Interior, and one of the main things he did was to introduce a standard uh, unit system, metric system, which is now called SI. Um, so we're going to follow Laplace here. We're going to stick um, to SI units. Now you might think, just a moment, if he was uh, this guy was working um, for Napoleon, that's after the French Revolution. So how come? He still had his head attached to his shoulders and was called um, a Marquis. Um, but he was a Marquis, actually, not under Napoleon, of course. He uh, acquired this uh, rather anachronistic title where after Napoleon with the restoration of the Bourbon uh, monarchy. Now, um, they uh, both published their work um, in 1805. I've got here a little picture from the, the front page of uh, Thomas Young's work where he introduces the idea of uh, contact angle, an essay on the cohesion of fluids, which was actually read right at the end of 1804. Very interesting, uh, um, rather different from what we do uh, nowadays because there are no, um, no equations and uh, no diagrams. But uh, it's where actually he looked at capillary rise, the same experiment in one of the other videos where I've showed with water rising up uh, into a tissue. Okay, so both uh, Young and Laplace worked on uh, sort of interfacial properties. Now, sometimes people get a little anxious about this. You know, it's a British-French tension here, so to speak. Um, they didn't work together because uh, Britain and France at the time were at war, at least for most of the time. And so there's a feeling, well, we're, aren't we giving a bit too much credit to Young because he's sort of in both equations? The answer really is no. There is a Laplace equation, okay? Del squared phi equals zero, which you can have in lots and lots of examples. Um, for instance, in, uh, this could be the phi could be the electrical potential, for instance. So there is a Laplace equation. So don't call the young Laplace equation the Laplace equation. That's actually just confusing 
So the young Laplace equation is, is, is written. If you really feel you need to give Laplace a little bit more credit for it, um, then PC, the capillary pressure, is sometimes called the Laplace uh, pressure. That's, that's uh, unambiguous. And then the young equation is, is that balance of interfacial forces. So that's um, all I wanted to say there, a relatively brief introduction to contact angle, which is a very important concept that we will develop later in other